Hello and welcome back. Um, in this video, we'll be looking at defense mechanisms. So in the past couple of um, videos, we looked at security objectives, the CIA, and then also the authentication and non-repudiation. Now we're going to move on to defense mechanisms and have a look at uh, what are the ways to defend uh, from a high level point of view. Okay. So there are many way, uh, actions against cyber attacks. So uh, the very basic thing you could do is to accept that there was a cyber attack, uh, but you don't do anything about it. So probably not really ideal thing to do. Um, but you could try to do avoidance. Um, that is trying to build a system that it will not be exposed to such attack. However, building such system is very, very difficult thing to do because you have to provide some sort of mechanisms and whenever you make such mechanisms, there are ways that it can be um, exploited by an external attackers. Okay. Then you come to transfer. So what this means is you blame somebody else pretty much or you transfer your... Um, responsibilities to somebody else and basically a good example for this is having an insurance so as a bank you buy an insurance if I get attacked and lose 10 million dollars the insurance you should cover me 10 million dollars right um, so it's, it's transferring your um, actions uh, to defend against cyber attacks so a lot of people especially large organizations large organizations will some have some sort of a transfer action as well as some of the other items here. And then uh, the next one is mitigation. So this is to implement defense solutions into your system to mitigate cyber attacks. And there are many ways to mitigate different attacks. So those four are uh, some of the most widely used uh, actions against cyber attacks. Obviously, uh, this is not a comprehensive list, but majority of the actions will fall into uh, those four. What we are interested in this unit is uh, specifically with mitigation. So we're not really going to look into acceptance of avoidance transfer. Okay. Rather, what are the actions in specific to mitigation that can um, uh, prevent cyber attacks happening into our system? So let's have a look at those a bit more um, general. So in the, in the mitigation section, it branches out into three subsections, which one is prevention, detection, and reaction. Okay. Um, prevention is a mechanism that's built in to make sure that even when the attack happens, this will block it. Okay. So what kind of example do you think will fall into prevention? Maybe, I say maybe because I really can't hear you. <laughs> um, probably, yeah. So let's have a look at my example. One of them is access control. So if I have an access control, uh, you can prevent a lot of different attacks, right? So people trying to um, access some of the data they're not supposed to can be blocked by access control easily. Okay? Firewall is one of the access control. Um, there's a different types of firewalls, which we'll cover later, but one of the simplest one is blocking packets based on IP addresses they're coming from. Okay, So if I know the IP address is coming from uh, this specific address, then I let that packet in. Otherwise, I just block it up. Okay? So that's preventing uh, external entities trying to get in. Uh, detection is also um, one of the mitigation approach. Uh, because it provides us with an information about what kind of attacks we are dealing with so that we can uh, relate this into both prevention and reaction steps. Okay? So detection itself doesn't actually prevent any attacks, but it leads to uh, us updating either the prevention or the reaction uh, mechanisms that those new ones uh, will be mitigated um, as soon as possible. Okay, so detection involves things like auditing and intrusion detection. 
So we'll have a look at the intrusion detection systems later, but also forensics is another way of finding out what might have happened. Uh, but intrusion detection systems are typically uh, real-time um, uh, detection systems, whereas forensics are more of you gather the evidence of what has already happened and try to trace back, uh, collect logs and evidence to see how this attack might have happened. So it's a, there's a little bit of difference between those two. Okay, um, And the reaction obviously is about doing something because the attacks didn't, uh, wasn't mitigated uh, within the prevention and detection steps. So this in, um, there are things like intrusion tolerance systems um, where you create an attack that may be blocked by a system that changes adaptively. Um, but obviously you can add additional security measures at this particular um, layer of defense. So if somebody broke in by breaking the password uh, in the, auth um, the access authentication uh, protocol, then you may want to enforce an additional layer of checking uh, so that you have to break that system as well to get in, which makes it more difficult. So reaction layer is more about uh, what other actions that you can take to enhance your current security measures. Okay, so let's have a look at that uh, in terms of pictures, right? So we have our important stuff sitting in the corner, uh, and then we have our layers of defense starting from prevention. So typically most attacks, if implemented well, should be prevented uh, at our first layer. However, uh, attackers, if they're more persistent, they will try to find a gap in these prevention systems and then try to get in. However, we'll have our detection layer trying to mitigate that as well. And as you can see, each layer may be exploited, but we have layers of defense that are preventing our important stuff uh, from the attackers. But it, eventually, attackers may be able to bypass all of those and reach the important stuff that we're trying to uh, secure. Okay, uh, So that's uh, when we say that the attack has successfully exploited uh, all of our defense mechanisms and you know store our stuff. But these are not always the ways that attacks happen. Sometimes attacks don't really have to uh, exploit some of the measurements because not all preventions will cover all the attack surface, which means uh, in your system uh, you have different uh, visibility to outside and if you don't have some defense mechanisms in some of those visibilities, then as an, ex as an attacker, you don't have to exploit that, you just bypass that. Okay? So there are different ways for attackers to gain uh, access into uh, your system um, without proper um, authorization. So we should always be evaluating uh, different ways that people exploit into our systems. So let's have a look at some prevention examples first. So that this forms our first layer of defense and basically it aims to protect your assets from attacks. So this is directly mitigating, um, kicking out any attackers trying to gain access. So Examples include using encryptions for secure communication, uh, authentication of legitimate users in the system, and user information is kept confidential. So all of those are prevention examples uh, which should be implemented. Uh, so when the attacker is trying to you know, exploit, uh, these are well protected uh, by the system already. Okay? Detection examples include uh, things like uh, protecting the logs to ensure that they cannot trace uh, what kind of users are doing what activities. But we can also implement things like packet tracing to ensure that uh, the, so the flow of the traffics are going to the expected, um, for example, the networks or the directed to the correct IP addresses and so forth. Uh, and there are also systems called intrusion detection systems where this is kind of like a, its own system attached 
to the network or the computers and analyzes either packets at a network level or um, API calls or system calls at a computer level and so forth and inspect what is happening to see whether there are any intrusions or not. Okay? Um, most of the modern systems will have these equipped and enabled by default, so you don't have to worry about it um, if you don't use it for very you know, high important stuff. So those should be all fine for your daily bankings and whatnot, but if you have more um, important, um, for example, projects, you work for a company, you have a laptop provided by company, then these will have a higher um, security rule set uh, applied to ensure that these are better enforced and so forth. Okay. And also we have reaction examples. So again, this is what how you react to an attack, what you can improve on in order to enhance the security. So things like uh, deploying two-factor authentication. So you, impl you implement another layer of authentication to ensure uh, you're protected uh, from people exploiting one method. Uh, revoke malicious membership access. So maybe you found out that there was a malicious actor within your organization that are sharing some important information. You can revoke that. Uh, enforce deterrence. Um, so this can be attached to the policies or um, if it's like organizational uh, level, maybe the cyber attacks can be directed to the initial attackers and so forth. However, this can be quite complex. Um, we'll have a look at that a little bit later as in different videos. Yeah, um, yeah so there's a few different ways to you how you can react to cyber attacks. But mostly people will try to add another layer of security in order for the, the observed attack, the successful ones, to be mitigated in the future. Okay. So defense mechanisms, there are a lot of them that falls into all uh, each one of those uh, three uh, subsection subcategories of mitigation that includes the firewall we have seen as an uh, example in the prevention uh, vulnerability scanning and patching so this will be detecting uh, IDS and IPS uh, security protocols uh, IPsec VPN sandboxing moving packet defense and so forth so hopefully you are familiar with some of those terms uh, if not all of them yeah we will cover these uh, items in later so this one is the summary of the defense mechanisms. The next video will look at um, risk and security management. Bye.